Pascal, let me start with you by giving us an overview of this concept of exponential thinking. Yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, super happy to be here, Jim. Um, so the idea of exponential thinking is that technology moves on an exponentially accelerating curve. Um, probably best known, Moore's Law. Moore's Law stipulates roughly that computers get twice as fast every two years. Now that's a compound growth. What this means for us is that we as humans are really not well equipped to understand exponential trends um, intuitively. So by training your mind to understand and fundamentally feel those exponential trends, you actually equip yourself to understand how the future will look like. Very simple example, imagine a computer. How good is a computer in 20 years? Now you can do probably the math, but even if you do the math right, how good does this actually mean? What does it mean for you as a, as a human being, like having all this compute power, for, for example? Mm -hmm. So this is a classic example of exponential mm -hmm. thinking. I'll give you a simple example. I was uh, with a car a manufacturer. They showed me the dashboard of the future, right? Like the dashboard they're building into their cars in five to seven years. And it still had knobs. And I looked at them and I was like, you will talk to your car. You don't need mm -hmm. knobs anymore. Mm -hmm. Susan. Nice to see you again. I've known you for a number of years. You've been involved with the uh, corporate innovation programs around the world, for that matter. And you're also involved with Singularity University. And so mm -hmm. my first question is about this, is you work with, or have seen many accelerators in mm -hmm. different uh, levels, whether they're uh, vertical, like uh, life science or something else. Are they doing something different at Singularity University than you've seen in other places? My impression is that they are doing something that's profoundly different because they are not just looking at the next food service app or the next dry cleaning app. They're looking at what technology and what startups and what entrepreneurs, what brilliant minds are doing that will change the world and will impact millions and billions. Maybe you want to give us a couple examples of what's sure. coming down the road a little bit here because, I mean, it's a broad yeah. scope of topics to say the least. I'll let you maybe give us a couple examples. Yeah, sure, just to pick a few. Um, uh, and they go really from the crazy to the uh, unbelievable. So you start out with... <laughs> I like this, crazy to the unbelievable. Okay. So you start out with a company called Miraculous. Um, they developed a, a blood-based uh, test to detect cancer um, by simply using a blood sample, looking for RNA, which certain types of cancer shed into your bloodstream. Uh, what they can do is they can detect certain types of cancer pre-stage one, so way mm -hmm. earlier than any other test, mm -hmm. at a test which costs probably $200 to administer, so it's incredibly cheap. Um, so if they succeed with what they want to do, they change the healthcare system. Um, it goes to a company called Matternet, which uses drones to do point-to-point -point delivery of uh, humanitarian aid in regions where there is no roads. Um, and ends probably with a company called Made in Space, which uh, created a 3D printer, which works in zero gravity. Uh, they currently have, as a startup, two printers on the International Space Station, literally printing replacement parts up there. How do you test something for zero gravity functionality? Do you fly a plane up, the, you know, five miles high, and then go into a dive so that there's zero gravity and see if the printer will work? Yes, that's exactly what they did, and they've done about 50 of those uh, parabolic flights. Do you offer any guest passage <laughs> in those flights? <laughs> <laughs> and so, have you been on one? I have not been on one. Uh, I heard that it's uh, you need to have a pretty uh, good stomach. So for us, it's really important to understand that the best ideas and the best solutions come out of diversity. Diversity of thought, diversity of background, and when you bring all the stakeholders at the table. So I, f I fundamentally believe like if you are only an entrepreneur, or if you're only a corporate, or if you're only an NGO, a non-government organization, you probably will not solve the world's biggest problems. But when you bring those together and have them collaborate, co-create, then you have a shot at actually making a real difference. That's the reason why we love working with all types of groups, including, by the way, also governmental groups, um, because you really literally have to have everyone needs to be at the table to solve these. Um, Singularity will pull together teams of mentors and advisors. Singularity will bring them all in the room to kind of be the devil's advocate and the reality check at the same time. 